Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another garden video. So today I am very excited to be out in my raised bed garden. This is where I've been planning to grow cut flowers and fruits and vegetables. I have 12 beds total, so it doesn't matter exactly how the split is, but it tends to work out to about six beds of cut flowers, six beds of fruits, vegetables, potatoes, all that fun stuff. So today we're going to be working on two of the front cut flower beds and I guess one watermelon bed. <laughs> Ideally, I am just planning to try to get all of the little seedlings that I started in my winter sowing method milk jugs in January into the beds today, planted up, watered in because they need to get out of their little milk jugs. They are they're starting to get a little stressed. So I have four rows in each of these. Three are going to be coming out of these milk jugs. I have um, Status, Amaranth, and Clarkia all coming out of milk jugs. These are definitely the best. This is the Status. And then I have several rows that we're going to be direct seeding into the beds as well. Might as well get it all done. I've planned out the entire space so I know where everything goes. Let's go ahead and I'm going to give you a little tour of the two beds we're doing and what we're planting in them. We want to get them finished and watered in, as well as the watermelon. The only other thing that I did in the milk jugs for this space is some eucalyptus that's going in a planter back here. We may or may not get to that. So let's focus on these two beds and start at the corner. All right, so this corner bed and the other corner bed are the two we're working on today and we're doing them in columns. So we have four rows in each column. The first two here are going to be amaranth. We have a coral fountain amaranth, and I did start some of these from seed, uh, direct seeded, or not direct seeded, with uh, the cold winter sewing method in these milk jugs. I also have a love lies bleeding amaranth. I did try to grow these last year and they didn't do super well. So I don't know if those are going to come up, but since we do have quite a few of these and quite a few of these, we're going to sandwich the ones we're not sure of in between those. And we'll, we'll come up with some version of plants. The forever happy status is part of my uh, goal to grow more filler flowers this year. And they probably are the best ones that I started and these milk jugs. I did three milk jugs of each and all three came up full of plants. So I'm very happy with those. And they, they may have to spill into a little more than one row, but we'll see. And then number four here, I have two packets of seeds still on the way that I'll have to do when they get here. But um, this is going to be a celiosa, a feather celiosa that's gonna be really pretty and is best to be direct seeded, so. Then we will skip over these two middle sections. These are going to be shorter flowers around our blueberry bushes or strawberries, not sure yet. Go right to number four here. So our first column is the other packet of seeds that's supposed to be here like tomorrow. Might be able to do it in this video if it comes soon enough, but it's going to be Love in a Mist. Then we have a Blush Cupcakes Cosmos, a Elegant Salmon Clarkia, which said it did well, um, being transplanted, recommended. So I did start three milk jugs of these and they did the absolute worst of any of the seeds I planted. You can see I only have one milk jug here. I had three. This was the best of the three milk jugs and it looks awful, but these ones might just not do great. So that's fine. We're going to go ahead and just plant them and then direct seed in between. And then we're gonna go ahead and do a row of salmon, rose, scabiosa, or pincushion plants. I actually did quite a few of these in milk jugs and they did great. I planted them out in the landscape in my garden and they are taking off. They're growing and doing really, really well. So I still have some seeds left. I decided since I had an empty row and I had seeds, might as well do a row of those. See how they do direct seeded. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna start down there get the plants in, then we're gonna get the seeds in. We'll see 
how far we get today. I also have uh, right there, two jugs with our little watermelons. Let me show you those real quick. These are the sugar baby watermelons. I've been growing them for four years now. I have the same packet of seeds. I'm gonna have to buy a new one eventually. But they do great for me every year. I love the watermelon and they're little, like personal size watermelon. So I have four plants. I'll be putting one on each corner of our little trellis. And uh, they should do well here. They did last year. So eventually I will probably swap them with this bed. I do cucumbers here or move those trellises all together. I know it's not the best to do the same plant in the same bed every single year. It depletes the, the soil of nutrients, but this is only my second year in these raised beds. I didn't use all of them last year, so I'm not gonna worry about it this year. We will worry about that next year. Let's go ahead and get started because it's still humid, but I'm trying to get these done in the, the shadier part of the afternoon so that they can be watered in and happy before it gets too hot tomorrow. Looking like nice little plants. I'm my drip run in this bed on this and the opposite corner. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and plant our plants on these two inside spaces next to our trellises uh, and then on the other side. And it looks like I have two plants that have two stems coming, coming up from the seed, and two that have one. So we'll go ahead and mix and match a one and two. I'm gonna plant them right next to a, uh, a drip spot, I can't think of the word, a drip emitter. I have some brown drip tubing in here and it has the drip spots every I think 12 inches watermelon like a lot of water imagine that so we'll plant these right by the emitters which I do have placed in the corners because that's where I plant planted my watermelon last year let's find the emitter over here now these sugar baby watermelon will climb they will go on this trellis they do need a little bit of help. So I'll come out and help stake them up. And then once they kind of get the hang of it, they'll start to climb on their own. But if I don't help them at all, they will just sprawl all over and try to take over um, the entire space. I do have garden tone in my shaker. I just like to shake my fertilizer. So I keep these containers and put whatever fertilizer I like in them. You may also notice that uh, last year I direct seeded Cosmos in this bed. And these are all self seeded from last year. They want to live, I will let them. Thank you. 
Cosmos on each spot here, right next to an emitter. Imagine that. I will probably transplant these two Cosmos out in the garden. But not this minute. All right, everything is planted. 90% of everything went exactly as planned, but one thing. So let's go over it all, show you where it all ended up. To the left, we started off strong with our coral amaranth from Johnny's Seeds, but I did not expect to have so many of these. I thought I had one row and I had two. So you can see I placed my best ones at the front and in the middle. And then the ones that I had teeny tiny babies, I went ahead and put two or three in a spot in the middle. These ideally should be spaced out nine inches apart, so they're a little close, but we're in cut beds, so I'm not super worried. But because I ended up with two rows of five, I did decide to eliminate that second amaranth row. If I decide I want that, I can always place it somewhere else in one of the other cut flower beds. I do have two or three other ones I haven't direct seeded yet. This Cosmos one, the one that's self-seeded from last year that has some holes, but Probably gonna leave that all cosmos. And then this bed here, um, I'm still going to be direct seeding zinnias in. So I could do a row of amaranth there if I wanted to. I'll be doing that another day though, cause it's getting late and I still want to plant all of these. Since it's supposed to rain tomorrow and I'm gonna get all the actual plants, not direct seeds in the ground. So the second thing that I was not expecting was so many status. I knew that those milk jugs were packed and happy, but I did not know they were this packed and happy. So I did three rows of six and there are two plants in each spot. So this may end up being 100% overcrowded. I've never grown status before, so I have no idea. I think I just sprinkled those seeds in the milk jugs and they went bananas. So we will see. I did leave a row here um, that I want to put that celiosis seeds in. If all these are still alive in a week when I go to plant the celiosa, I can always spread them out a bit more and put the celiosa here. But I probably won't move them now that they're planted. So we'll see. You can see they are wilting a little bit now that I've moved them, but I've watered them in. We're supposed to get water tomorrow and a couple days of shade before the heat comes. I also really like these raised beds um, because when I don't fill them all the way to the top with soil and the seedlings or baby plants are little, I can put some shade cloth over the top on hot, hot days until the seeds get established. So I may come out with some shade cloth. It's supposed to be, I think like 89 on Friday. It is Monday. So if they don't look a lot better by Friday, I will shade them before, before they get too hot. All right. Now that bed looks much more impressive than this one. <laughs> oh, our, our salmon clarkia. I guess this is the best one. Oh, we have five that I planted. I am, I am not expecting great things from them. So I did go ahead and direct seed some more. I also direct seeded two rows of the salmon scabiosa or pen cushion plants and two rows of the blush uh, cupcakes cosmos. We will see. Oh no, lost my shoe. You can see I'm still working on my pea gravel here, but it's getting there. It's getting there. At least all the mulch is finally in. Whew, everything is getting done, so. Last but not least, you did see my beautiful sugar baby watermelons. I love these. I wish 
you would get them more spread out over the season. You tend to get like one and it's really exciting. And then you get like seven all in the same week. And even though they're small, I don't need seven all in the same week. Uh, so it's fine. I obviously just give them to friends and family. They also like enjoying them. And that's part of the fun. Growing your own fruits and veggies is sharing with other people. So I'm gonna go ahead and go work on those other pieces instead of direct seeding my last two beds so that they can benefit from the rain tomorrow. And we will be back at the end of the month for a garden tour and an update on how these things are doing. So I will see you then. Cross your fingers, say a prayer that everything we planted today is flourishing the next time you see it. Bye y'all.